Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Here's an update what's going on at Yellowstone. I wanted to pull this camera over here, the image, to show you the dead trees that had grown up during the quiet period and now are dying off because of the gases coming up because of the recharging, the resurgence of Yellowstone. The largest earthquake recorded today was a magnitude 3.7 that was 15 kilometers west, southwest of Stanley, Idaho. Here we have the Sawtooth Fault Line. In my last video, I talked about how the Yellowstone hotspot caldera, as it moved up through the Snake River Plateau, how it still, even today, affects the faults that run along the Snake River Plateau craters of the moon and hell's half acre are all the results of the deposit of magma uh, this was basalt that came up but it's um, because of the magma that was deposited as the yellowstone hotspot moved up through the snake river plateau now they know in fact i showed you a paper in my last video about yellowstone how the fault lines running up through the Snake River Plateau are affected 50 miles up any of the fault lines, 50 mi or 50 kilometers, 31 miles, um, the fault lines running up on both sides of the uh, Snake River Plateau are today still affected by the Yellowstone hotspot. Just like today, as the magma is now moving in an easterly direction and also moving horizontally. This is why we have the uplift and subsidence of the Norris Junction area, of the Yellowstone area, and of the Madison Creek and Denny Creek area also. The magma has been moving uh, several years horizontally because it can't find a way to break through. Uh, not like it was trying to do down here by Grant with the multiple earthquakes that were happening. And because of that rhyolite top, it's got nowhere to go but sideways. Uh, many of you that follow me will remember when I, I posted about how the magma was flowing horizontally. The same thing happened here at the Snake River Plateau. In between eruptions, before it found a way to break through the surface, example, the Henry Fork Caldera, which was, what, 1.3 million years ago. And then the um, Island Park Caldera, which was uh, before that 2.6 million years ago. Before those eruptions, the magma was moving horizontally. A really good example of that hot magma is all the hot springs, the hot pools that are along the uh, Sawtooth Fault Zone. I went through and marked some of these hot springs. Yeah, did some research on them. We got the Salmon River Box Boat Box Hot Spring. That's an interesting site. There's also the Snake Pit Hot Springs. That's just outside of Stanley. Many businesses have taken advantage of these natural occurring waters that come up and have privatized them and built heated pools for tourists to come in. This is the Snake Pit Hot Springs. That one is not far from the Salmon River Boat Box Hot Springs. Yeah, say that 10 times real fast. This one here um, was originally built as a box, a wooden box that would get uh, flooded out and washed away every year. And now the community people have put in a metal tub here Oops, I wonder if I can show it. Okay, let me turn this around. It's down below the cliff here. Right there. And they have a pipe that feeds in the hot water. And you control the temperature by dumping buckets of cold water from the river. And we all know that hot springs are fed uh, because of heated water from volcanic activity. And this is all along the Sawtooth Fault Zone. With all my different notes that I've recently put on here, it's getting rather cluttered. 
the red line right here is the current size of the caldera itself. But um, we got magma that flows out horizontally. Like I said, we know that we got um, magma north of that area for the Madison River and even going all the way up to Gardner um, for the Mammoth Vaults. And I've talked about the recent volcanic cones that were found along the one road going up to Gardner to Mammoth Hot Springs and the volcanic um, flows, the lava flows in this area. And then we got the caldera size for the Island Park caldera. Look how big that is. That's that blue line. And then the Henry Fork caldera. The point I'm trying to make, if you take the size and the direction of all the lava flows known, um, emitted and not emitted, and I'll pull this over to the area of Sawtooth where we've been having all these earthquakes, which, yeah, it's really surprising. Um, yeah, Idaho has a lot of hot springs. We got another one. It's uh, Kirkham Hot Springs, Pine Flat Hot Springs, um, another one, Pine Burl Hot Springs. Another really interesting fact that I found today was that the Madison River and the Henry Forks River, which comes out of Henry Lake, actually used to flow in the opposite direction. But because of uplift, uh, crustal displacement, um, yeah, what do you think that was from? Remember the red lines are the uplift for Yellowstone? But because of crustal displacement, and erosion, the rivers now flow the opposite direction than what they used to flow. I'll give you a link to this paper, Henry's Fork Valley, which was subsequently reversed to form the North Orientation Madison River drainage drought seen today. The flood flow reversal was probably indirectly caused by crustal warping that occurred as melted water floods flowed across the region with the crustal warping being related to thick ice sheet presence north and east of figure one. And they have a map on here about the Madison River. Flood waters on the north end of the beheaded flood flow channels reverse flow direction to create the north oriented Madison River drainage system and the north-oriented Missouri River segment north of the Madison River. This massive flood flow reversal was probably greatly aided by the ice sheet-related crustal warping that raised mountain ranges in the study region. In this area of the map, the rivers used to flow south, and now they flow north. And if you look at the red lines compared to where the cold air is, and the uplift was pretty easy to see why, yeah, <laughs> why they reverse flow with the uplift. Yeah, we got a north trending uplift in this direction, and then down here would be south trending. Many of you have noticed how this mountain range, the one right here and the one right here, looks like it's been cut off. Well, it actually just blew away from the eruption, uh, more likely the uh, Island Park caldera um, eruption. Same thing happened with the Snake River Plateau. The mountain ranges were blown out. And a lot of people think it just followed a straight line, but the eruptions weren't in an exact straight line. You know, they were kind of like at a zigzag position. And many of the old eruptive sites are now buried by uh, new um, lava flows. The next strongest earthquake they had today was a magnitude 2.5. That was also um, there 11 kilometers west northwest of Stanley, Idaho. And that's the location of that earthquake. I'll pull it out for you. 
The Denny Creek monitor is near the Holmes Hill monitor, and that was showing a lot of activity yesterday. Yes, yeah, some real thick lines showing the indication of magma. But today, um, I changed it over to Denny Creek because for some reason that monitor isn't working today. Up here we got Yellowstone Lake, and then up at the top we got Norris Junction. The only real signature I see on the Yellowstone monitors is the magnitude 3.7 that occurred 34 minutes after minute, midnight universal time, almost 35 minutes after midnight. Here's its signature as it came in at Norris Junction. A lot of activity, um, microquakes before that. Um, in the middle is Yellowstone Lake, and then down here we have Denny Creek. And like I said, Denny Creek has been showing a lot of activity. See that? Looks like they moved the camera. Over here is Ear Spring. And that's the one, I believe, what was it, last year? That erupted the first time in, what, 70 years and brought up all that trash and, um, yeah, coins and plastic and metal that people had tossed into... Uh, Air spring, but you can see it's still active. So that's all I have for you right now. If you have any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Um, please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.